Hello, I'm Atubo George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. I'm so excited in my spirit because all week we've been dwelling on what everything I'm sharing with you is how to get yourself into his operations. Heaven has his own operation. So right now you're ready to receive that operation where your daily bread is concerned. Are you ready? Jesus said we should do this. And he commanded me that on every broadcast, I should lead you to do this. So if you believe in Jesus Christ, believe also in his prophets and you will prosper. Say this with me, say, Father. Now don't just sit down there and say, mm, okay, I'm listening. Say it, declare, just declare, just say it today, praise God, say, Father. I demand and I receive my daily bread today. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Yep, it's done. Watch out for what's going to happen today. A miracle is coming your way. Let's pray. Father, we give you praise for this time of revelation and truth. Thank you for your spirit guiding us into all truths. And we submit ourselves to your reasoning, to your thoughts, and to your words. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray burdens are being lifted right now. Yokes are being destroyed in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Listen, I read the scripture in the book of Job yesterday and it it's sums up everything we're talking about how to understand the operation of god that's what we've been talking about all week understanding the operation of god god has a system of operation and you can't bypass it if you follow that system you will be established you will be built up you will always know what to do because this is the truth ultimately god is getting you to be exactly like him. So that's why he called us to walk in faith. Not so we walk in faith today and tomorrow we go back to walking in the senses. He called us to so everything. You know, I've always said this. If God does something twice in your life, reason it out. There's something there to follow. Reason it out. Because he expects you to reason it. Not doubt it. Reason it out. So I was sharing with you yesterday, how do you acquaint yourself with God? Submit to his ideas. Submit to his thoughts. Now, and how do you do that? Say, receive his word from his mouth. From his mouth. Jesus said it. Actually, Moses said it first. Well, God said it. And told Moses, Moses spoke it out. And Jesus repeated it. That man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Meaning, if God says, you will live by every word proceeding from my mouth, it means he has to ensure that words are proceeding from his mouth to you. Now, if that is happening on his side, the question then is, are you receiving his word from his mouth? So how do I receive his word from his mouth? Get acquainted with him. Get acquainted with him. Submit to his ideas. Submit to his thoughts. Submit to his reasonings. Mrs. Translation says, come to terms with him. Come to terms with him. Not him. You see, some of us, we want to force God to come to terms with us. So, for example, you're, you're believing God for money. And guess what you're doing? Father, 
Because your mind cannot go beyond that. Father, I've written that interview. Lord, please touch their hearts to give me the job. If they give me that job, and Father, please, I need that job this month because Hey, if I don't get that job this month, it will affect my house rent next year. Did, did, did you hear that? You reason that way. Because I need to get a job so that I'll be getting my salary paid every month. And then by that time, my rent is I should have been able to, I would put myself on stringent you know, spending. And I'll be able to save this amount of money. More like you're saying to God, if you just give me this job, I won't bother you where the house rent is concerned. And God is looking at you. Why is he looking at you? Because he has already provided the house rent money. For next day, he has already provided. So he's looking at you. What you're using to bargain with me, something I've already given you. What, what kind of fake bargain is that? I'm telling you the truth. Oh God, if you can just heal me this one last time. Come on now. Why are you locking up yourself with your mouth? Because Satan is going to use that to accuse you tomorrow. You will get into trouble tomorrow and you want to pray. Satan will now come and say, you say one last time. What, what do you want to say again? God gave you, he answered you. Didn't you? Are you not the one that said one last time? He says, it's true. Okay, if I say that God, you know, it now look like God. Not. You know how many people are in bondage by their own minds? All because they don't understand the operations of God. And, and, and God, I, 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 I see. Hmm. We, we are, you know, everything I'm talking to you about, we are looking at it from the point of God meeting your needs. And I started on Monday telling you that you need to come to terms with this truth the body of christ need to come to terms with this truth that was the reason in the first place god taught abraham about titan we don't understand what titan is meant for yet we are still thinking oh it's so you know you even you ask people sometimes say Hey, but if people don't bring tithe now, how will the churches run the affairs of the church? And how will the... But when God spoke about tithing, there was no church. And, and don't think he was looking at the future and say, okay, one time church is going to come, so let me begin to... No! No! His word is bigger than every church organization. I'm telling you the truth. Yes! So, why did he come to Abraham and said, Abraham, you've got to tithe. What is tithe, Lord? You've got to take out 10% of everything you have. Everything you receive. You take out 10% and it's your tithe. So, Abraham said, okay. He began to practice it. He taught Isaac. He taught Jacob. I mean, Jacob, because Jacob tithe. You know, Jacob said to God, Lord, if you will bless. He had nothing. He had nothing. And he was going into a foreign land. And then he thought to himself, I better make a deal with God. Because he has been taught concerning tithing. So he said, okay, I know the deal to make with God. Father, if you will bless me indeed like you have said. See, God spoke to him and said, I will bless you. He said, if you will bless me indeed, I'm not going to be rebellious where tithing is concerned. Because Isaac understood how important the tithe is to God. So he used it as a bargaining chip with God. He knew that God needed him to tithe. He knew. So he said, if you will bless me indeed, I vow that of everything you give to me, I will give you one tenth to you. It's not a promise he was making like, I'm trying to do you good. No, he already knew the message of Titan. But he knew that it is dependent on God's blessing. You understand what I'm saying? So he, he was there and he's just like, what do I do now? God just spoke to him that he will bless me. How do I respond to this? So he made that vow. What vow did he make? He made a vow to be committed to God's system. Committed to God's operation. And then Moses brought the law to the people. And in the law, he had to put the law of tithes because it was too important. He cannot let them go without it. 
He even put penalties for not tithing, you know, just like we do now. The penalty was not what was important to God because it's supposed to be a willing thing. But because, you see, just like God said about Abraham, he will command his children and his household after him. So this was Moses' way of commanding the children of Israel to obey the tithing principle. So he said, look, if I put a penalty, they will sure not want to miss it because they will not want to part with their goods. So if they know that if they miss it, they will still pay more. So they better do it. So Moses added that penalty in tithing. Now, we stay here and we look at it and say, tithing is not important. The Lord told me this one day, recently, you know, <laughs> a few months ago. The Lord said, anyone who's opposed or who speaks against Titan is speaking by the spirit of the Antichrist. Now, what does that mean? The Antichrist has influenced that person's reasoning. Jesus has not influenced that person's reason. So, we think, now, lots of misunderstanding, yes. So, some think Titan is conditioned or Titan is a condition for God to bless you. No, sir. Titan is not the condition for God to bless you. Titan is your response to his blessing. So if he has already blessed me, then why should I tithe? Simple. See, that's why I say, reason it, reason it. Simple. God says, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he that gives you power to get wealth. So when I'm blessed, I take out the 10% and I honor the Lord with it. And that's why it must be the first thing you do. If you don't do it first, you have removed the mark of honor on that thing and then you are just practicing a law so when i get blessed I'm like mm, mm, thank you jesus i'm so excited you blessed me now i'm thinking of the tithes like lord you know what i'm gonna honor you because i you see I, we are recognizing where the blessing is from it's not from my sweats it's not from the devil it's from him I recognize that. So I tithe. I take out the tithe first. And I put it aside. Now, because I understand that this is, this is, even the Old Testament it was like that. And now, how much more in the New Testament? Now, this is where most people get it wrong. What do you do after you take out the tithe? Now, that's the most important part. And if we get it right here, it solves the whole problem. Every wrong thinking in people's mind. So now, because the tithe belongs to God, it's then important, knowing that God is alive, just talk to you about acquainting yourself with him, receiving words from his mouth. So I go before him and say, Lord, thank you. Now I have your tithe. What would you have me do with it? Would you instruct me concerning the tithe? And I will obey you, Lord, whatever you tell me to do. And then he instructs you concerning it. He says, son, I want you to do this. I want you to do that. I want to give it to Susan. So I want to give. Now, whoever the Lord commands you to, to give the tithes to, when you carry that out, he has received it. Now, we come to the reason now for tithing. The reason for tithing was number one, blessing. God was creating a system of operation to get his children blessed on the earth. I say, but, but we can give, we can give. Give to who? Give to where? Titan is an operation that we deliberately come before the Lord and say, Lord, thank you. I recognize you have blessed me. Meaning, when God was choosing to bring that blessing to you, he has thought about several other things, several other people. So he blesses you. Now you take out the tithe and say, Lord, and then he tells you, take it to so and so. Take it to that brother that you saw. Take it to so and so pastor. Take it to that church. Take it to that orphanage. Everywhere he has his work going on. He commands you. Now we've got testimonies and test people who, who hear this message and they began to practice it. Testimonies upon testimony. And it, the beauty of it is always this. You know, God told me to send my tithes to somebody. 
Now, you don't necessarily have to say, this is my tithe. The tithe is between you and God. It's an operation between you and God. Then God tells you, send it to so-so and so person. It's your choice to say, oh, the Lord said I should send you my tithe. Or just send the money to the person. The most important thing is you have obeyed God. So now you are here. The person is over there praying to God. You are over here telling God, look, you, I, I bring my tithe to you. And then he commands you. And then you respond by giving to that person. Now, guess what? An operation has been established. The end result is a miracle. To you, it wasn't a miracle. To you, it was just... You were blessed, so you took your tithe before the Lord. And then the Lord commanded you where to send your tithes. And you obeyed him. But where the end result of that is always this. Life everlasting. Just like the scripture says, when we sow in the spirit, we receive life everlasting. That person is excited. It has been confirmed in his heart that God is real. When the church begins to practice this, we come into that full operation of Jesus being our high priest and everyone is just getting blessed everywhere, praise God. And God is being glorified. Think about it. How many times people, you know, you just obey God and, and someone shouts hallelujah in his heart or in his house. Think about it. God's children everywhere begin to function like this. All the praises that's going to be going up from right, left, center to God. The burden is, is lifted from people's hearts. Yokes of poverty is being destroyed. Not because a preacher came and said, hey, I declare poverty broken. No, God's children from their various corners just operating God's system. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Are you getting this? Because my time is far spent. But I needed to conclude on this. Praise God. I pray for you right now. That the Spirit of God opens your eyes today. And bring His revelation knowledge in your hearts. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let this be the best weekend of your life. I prophesy so. In Jesus name. Amen. I'll see you on Monday. Bye bye.